Today we are going to discuss something of extreme importance that is missing in the analyst perspective on Tesla stock and the outlook for the business. What you're seeing here is of course the Robotaxi launch or the pilot that we saw or the launch event all the way back way before like in 2024 in October and was a reminder that there is a huge disconnect between the vision and what we are seeing on the ground. And it's very important that we now understand while Robotaxi is actually scaling and very important breakthroughs are around the corner for FST, at least in my opinion and in Elon's opinion, that we understand the business model behind this whole thing and why the analysts that say that Tesla and Robotaxi is just going after Uber's ride share market are terribly wrong in my opinion. Now, why is that? Because you have to take a step back and understand, and I pointed towards this in previous episodes, but today we are doing a deep dive into that. So take a step back and think about what does it mean if Tesla can generate a worldwide transportation infrastructure that is full self-driving, where robo-taxis are roaming around everywhere, or robo-cars that can drive you anywhere you want, at a very low per mile cost of $1, roughly $1. Now, what does it mean? It means a lot of things, especially when you combine it with Tesla's ability and capability to manufacture millions and millions and millions of these cars very, very rapidly. There can easily hit 4 million cars per year production scale in 2027, easily, easily. They're already at 3 million potential scale where they are at. At now, but with the cyber cap rolling off the line starting in April, they will expand that another million, in my opinion, from a theoretic capacity perspective. So, what does it mean if you can combine full self driving autonomous infrastructure with millions and millions of cars, not to speak of the 8 million Teslas that are already on the road right now? I think what it means is that we are entering a new age of automatic and autonomous transportation that most analysts and even investors do not fully understand because they're looking at this new age from an old legacy perspective. They segment the market into different markets, how cars are being used and public transport buses are being used, vans are being used, trucks are being used. These are all comp compartmentalized silos for them, different temps, different markets, when in reality, all of these markets might merge into a singular thing that is called global autonomous transport. And that global autonomous transport has the potential to replace all cars and all vehicles on Earth. And what I found out through a lot of digging and thinking about this whole thing is that there is probably something being brewed up in Tesla's headquarter and beyond that indicates a little bit where this journey is going and how Tesla intends to actually unlock this entire market. And I want to show you guys something that we just saw here from Soya Merritt and then also other people on X having published. And what that is, is Tesla's rental program. I want to start with that and then explain more and more how I think around that. So as you all know, potentially Tesla just opened up rental program that they established in a pilot in San Diego. And this rental program for some is just a little side business of Tesla, but Tesla doesn't do any side businesses. It is strategic and it points to where this company is going and how it will redefine car ownership on a massive scale that prepares us for a company that goes into car ownership, rental car, leases, and ride shares at the same time, and in fact actually blurs the line between all these different markets. So let's first look at what they're doing here. Tesla launched this thing and you can rent for $60 a day, all inclusive, right? That includes free supercharging, unlimited mileage, FSD supervised, app access, and of course, uh, insurance, right? Where Tesla insurance is available. So for $60 a day, you get a fire and forget car, which is actually pretty cheap when you consider that includes gas and unlimited miles. 
and even without like for Europe it's very cheap but for the US it's like it depends how good you are in, in booking rental cars I'm pretty good at it so I would be way below that in most instances but it wouldn't be a Tesla so and it wouldn't inf in, in, it wouldn't include the gas or the fuel whatever you call it so for 60 bucks a day you get a Model 3 right and then you get a Cybertruck for 90 bucks a day you get a Model S and of course very easy you just go there and it's not a rental company it's Tesla itself and you can do this so I want you guys to think about this. I want you guys to get out of your mind $1 per mile for rideshare competing with Uber at, you know, $10 a mile or whatever it is. I want you guys to forget $60 a day versus Hertz at $60 a day without a Tesla and without gas, for example. I want you guys to get out of your head $799 or $549 lease with 3000 down versus a BMW at, you know, 3000 down and $849 lease. These are the different segments. You compare Tesla Robotaxi to Uber. You compare Tesla rental to Hertz. You compare Tesla lease to BMW. Get it out of your mind because what Tesla is preparing here is something very, very different. It is one company because guess what? If you order a BMW on Uber, you're not dealing with BMW, you're dealing with Uber. If you rent a BMW with Hertz, you're not dealing with BMW, you're dealing with Hertz. And you're not dealing with Uber. But with Tesla, you order your robo taxi for $1 a mile from Tesla, you order your rental Model 3 for $60 a day from Tesla, and you lease your Tesla Model 3 from Tesla. And what that does, is it allows Tesla to transcend these silos. Let me explain. If you think about transportation and not car ownership, but car access, and as we will see in a second, ownership and access might be the same thing when you really think about it. You can put all of this on a continuum, on a line, on a line that is an economic equilibrium between different trade-offs. You always sit in a Tesla in the end, and this Tesla drives you around. In one instance, you pay $1 per mile. In another instance, you pay $60 a day. In the third instance, you pay $600 a month. So now you can decide. If you rent a Tesla Model 3 more than 10 days a month, and you keep doing this over multiple months, you shouldn't rent it, you should lease it. If you book a robo taxi for one dollar a mile and you drive more than 60 miles that day, you would have been better off renting a Model 3 or robo taxi, right? And here's the thing. Now consider, since that is the same vendor that sells you all these different financing options for your Model 3 or robo taxi access, what happens if you can't decide? Or what happens if you want to switch? What happens if you use RoboTaxi every day and keep exceeding these 60 miles and paying more than $60 a day? Maybe RoboTaxi recognizes that and says, you know what, we have a better option. You could just rent me for a day. What about that? You can just pay 60 bucks a day and then drive 150 miles and save 70 bucks. And if you do this long enough, the RoboTaxi will tell you, you know what, you could lease me you are spending 1,900 bucks a month on robotaxi miles because you're driving a crazy 1,900 miles. You're better off renting me for 60 a day. That's only 1,800. And if you exceed the 1,800, guess what? You're better off paying me 800 or 1,000 with no money down for a new type of lease. And now comes the interesting thing. As you see, this is all on a continuum. You are paying per mile or per access or per time for getting access to a Tesla. And if you want very tactical access just for an hour, just for a mile, you pay way more, way more, pay way more than for a lease. But if you constantly use it, this lease becomes better for you. But the downside of the lease is you have a commitment, right? If you only drive five miles a month and you leased it, you could have gotten this thing instead of for 550 for five bucks with a robo taxi. So you can, you know, you can adjust. But what does that do? 
First of all, it allows Tesla to recognize the users and propose the best financial solution for them. Of course, second, that means Tesla can start blending these business models into a continuous economic model. Technically, there's infinite scalability in the incremental steps here. Maybe you could also have a $420 option, right? That gives you up to that many miles or up to that many days or hours access. And you go all the way to 800 bucks a month where you have complete constant access as if you own this thing or lease it. Or you can have completely tactical access with $1 per mile. Or there might be new options where you pay maybe $49 a month and get discounted miles, right? Or the first 60 miles free. So in other words, you can now create this entire complicated thing behind the scenes that, you know, in front of the scenes becomes extremely attractive because what is behind all this, what I'm saying here? Behind, of, behind all of this is, instead of having these giant step changes right now in these very different kind of markets for the consumer where you have to make a decision, oh, I'm moving into this new city or something, should I order Ubers all day long or should I actually commit to this crazy lease for 36 months or should I do rental cars? But if I decide on one, I can't easily switch. I'm kind of locked in, I'm screwed. Of course, I can take Uber, the most expensive tactical options, but if I start lease, uh, renting cars from Hertz, that's getting very expensive quickly. If I commit to a month long you know, rental period, then I'm kind of locked in. What if I don't use the car anymore? And then I have to return and handle this whole thing. With Tesla, especially with a massive potential infrastructure worldwide and all over the place, this whole thing becomes seamless and frictionless. You can now start doing all these things on the fly. You can say, you know what, I will not downgrade my plan or upgrade my plan. It's going to be like a phone plan. You will always be a T-Mobile or AT&T, but you are traveling, you are adding a package, you know, adding your international roaming, calling package, whatever. Or you can downgrade and say, you know what, I, I don't use the phone right now. I'm, I'm doing a timeout. I want to downgrade it to whatever, 20 bucks micro plan, but sticking to T-Mobile. The same thing is true with Tesla, and that is blurring the line between all these markets and turn leasing, financing, car ownership, rental car business, and of course, ride sharing business and public transportation and transportation of goods and deliveries into one enormous, seamless market called Tesla autonomous infrastructure. The benefit behind that are enormous, not just for us as shareholders or for Tesla as a company, but most importantly for consumers, because what does it all mean in the end? It means transportation itself, transportation as a service and as a solution to you as a consumer is now frictionlessly integrated into your preferences and economically optimized to exactly what you want and exactly what you want to pay for, leading to significant instant and massive reductions in costs. You know, think through this. It will be, everyone will, can, will be able to spend on a smoothened under the curve area of that scale will be able to choose exactly the area under the curve that cost and flexibility optimizes transportation for that person. And nothing is more powerful in the world of business than an economically superior model for the consumer. Because even if consumers don't understand anything I just said, what they do understand is that they will have more money, more transportation and more money, way more transportation. So I think that is what Tesla is building here. And that means if I'm right, we will see Tesla actually doubling down on the different programs. We will see that this will not be a rigid Uber model, but it will be a seamless thing where we'll see eventually probably many, many more of these things popping up. Intermediary steps between the rental program and the ride share program and between the rental program and the leasing program and the financing program. This now can be all seamless and customized for the user. And the implications of that, when you actually extrapolate it beyond just the consumer into businesses, into trucking, into 
other goods, transportation and delivery services and everything becomes this amorphous blob of Tesla supremacy where you can just pick and choose and say, you know what, I need a thing, a platform that does 200,000 deliveries with that frequency and that range, calculate my price and Tesla's transportation, transportation infrastructure provides you with exactly the most flexible solution at the best price that others can't even compute. UPS and all these other guys, they can't even compete with this kind of stuff on the goods and services B2B side. On the personal transport side, no public transportation system, no other car company with a leasing and financing program, no ride sharing, no taxi operator can compete with that because now it's a singular, hyper intelligent marketplace of transportation solutions that creates custom quotes and financing solutions for you on the fly, AI created of course, on this continuum and since there will be robo taxis everywhere you have immediate access, immediate access to your new transportation solution. May it be for your kids to kindergarten, for yourself to go to work or have go to your parties or as a business to transport your goods, whatever you want. It's one seamless global transportation infrastructure bookable with a click of a button for a price optimized solution that significantly beats any competitor. And once you understand that, you understand the TAM. It is all of global trucking. It is all of global deliveries. It is all of global public transport. It is the entire global 2 billion cars, car market. It is, of course, the entire ride share market, which is tiny, and the 2.5 million rental cars in the United States and over 10 million worldwide. Because we have to understand this is a seamless transportation infrastructure. It is not a car company. It's not a rental company. It is not a ride sharing company. It is not a trucking company. It is seamless, global, autonomous transport accessible with an AI controlled pricing and economics model that makes sure everyone gets exactly what they want. That is just one example why I'm excited about Tesla, why I like Elon's thinking. You have to model out the future based on the new first principles that you create, use meaning Tesla and Ashok and Elon, in combining these components and then think from scratch how this new world looks like. And that is very important for us because that new world is very likely arriving in 2026. And if you haven't noticed, that is the year we are already living in. I hope this was interesting. See you tomorrow.